Hi, my name is Dorothy Kazombo Mwale, an environmentalist and a young ambassador for the Earth Project. Today, I will be having a discussion with Dr. Heidi Stelzer on the topic of climate change and ecosystem restoration. But before we get into it, could you please give us a brief introduction about who you are, what you do, and where you're from? Hello, my name is Heidi Stelzer. I live in Durango, Colorado, in the United States of America. I'm a mountain scientist, and I live in the mountains and I study the impacts of a warming planet on the abundance of snow, the presence of snow, and the impacts that changing snow has on our world. How is climate change affecting the ecosystem? Climate change is leading to a strange snow situation in my region. It's one that has consequences for plants, for wildlife, and for people. Mountain snow is the water supply for all of us for the plants, the wildlife, and people. It's also a season of rest, a time when plants can rest, a time when animals can hibernate, and a time when um, people can recreate in different ways, but also we tend to lay a little bit lower in the winter um, in the part of the, the world that I live in. What mitigation and adaptation measures can be undertaken to restore the ecosystem? What are some of the solutions? Um, people are exploring all kinds of ways to work to improve ecosystem health. And some of those ways of improving ecosystem health also do a good job of storing carbon from the atmosphere that's, um, that's increased over the industrial era. So what's that solution? Around my region, folks are getting more and more into regenerative agriculture, finding ways to have plants, and animals on the land that leads to healthy soils. And those soils are full of the carbon getting pulled out of the atmosphere by the plants that grow there. And through the animals and the animals using, um, walking the land, um, increasing the carbon storage in those places. So regenerative agriculture is important, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't also be working to decrease fossil fuels. Let's get to um, zero emissions as soon as possible. And after saying all that, what inspired you to be in the field that you are in now? I became a mountain scientist. Um, it, I was inspired. I was inspired by the mountains. I found respite in the mountains. Uh, the mountains were a place of adventure. Um, the first summer I came to Colorado was 1993, and it was the first time I crossed a frigid river um, in order to study mountain ponds and hike to peak, um, hiking a trail that was only as narrow as I was wide and getting scared. Um, it was also a place where I found community, found people who I wanted to engage with, talk with, um, and that was a community of scientists, but also a community of people who um, have long lived in the mountains and celebrate the mountains um, through uh, the sports and the time that we spend um, having adventures here. To Haiti, what action can someone take today, right now, after they watch this video to help the environment? So the actions um, that need to take place in order to minimize and reduce the impacts of climate change are up to us. They're up to all of us. Uh, we need to connect with others, um, especially those who are vulnerable and who are experiencing the most um, dramatic impacts of climate change. And those may be pe people in a country different than the one that we live in. It's also important that we connect to people who think differently from ourselves. And those may be people in the country we live in and maybe the, the neighbors that we have down the street. So creating a space where there can be open dialogue, interesting conversations, and a chance to be curious about how someone else thinks. And hopefully that they'll be curious how you think. Um, those are some of the actions that we can take. Um, all the best and a special hello to Dorothy in Malawi, who is my partner in the Young Ambassadors Program. Thank you.